Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia. Claudia, based on the famous play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. Bertha! Bertha, I'm out here in the car. (laughs) Anything you want me to get down the village for you while I'm down in the village? Not a thing, Mrs. Norton. Listen, I'm not calling you. Go on back. It's cold. We want, we have enough baby food and everything. Oh, plenty. I do not like ready-made baby foods for babies. But it's supposed to be good. Oh, when I cook it myself, it's better. It's cheaper, and I know what is in it. You just don't want to let us make life easier for you, do you, Bertha? <laughs> it is easy enough. Hey, you'll be cold out here without a coat, Bertha. Go on in. Go on, go on, go on. Hey, listen. On your way, you call Mr. Norton. Tell him he'll be late for his train if he doesn't step on her. He's coming. He was right in the hall putting on his hat and coat. Just think, for once I'm waiting for him instead of vice versa. A little change does everyone good. David, you want me to start the car? Mr. Norton, Mrs. Norton wants to know should she start the car. Well, tell Mrs. Norton, Mr. Norton says she can start the car. Mrs. Norton, Mr. Norton says to start the car. Honestly, getting him off to the station every morning is like shooting the shot that was heard around the world. Bertha, I bet you 20 cents the minute I start the car, he'll be running out here. I don't know. Somehow a man can't stand seeing anybody else start a car, let alone drive it. I suppose it has something to do with why they're men. All right, darling. I'm all ready. You see, Bertha, they are all the same. Different, but all the same. Push over, darling. What's the matter? Am I not good enough to drive you downtown? Push over. All right, I'm pushed over. Mere woman hasn't got a chance around here. Goodbye, Bertha. Goodbye, Mrs. Norton. Goodbye, Bertha. Drive carefully when you come home. Yep. Well, considering how you respect my ability with cars, David, I'm surprised you're allowing me to buy the battery for the truck all by myself. I am not allowing you to buy the battery for the truck all by yourself. You're not coming with me. I'm dropping you off the station so you won't miss your train. No, I'm not coming with you, but uh, what do you suppose has just held me up? I don't know. I don't suppose anything. What held you up? I was calling up the garage. What for? To tell them that you were coming along and what kind of battery to give you. Now I am insulted. Do you mean you don't trust me to drive into a garage and buy a battery? No, I don't trust you. No other woman would stand for this kind of treatment? I'm only trying to make it easier for you. Now you don't have to think about a thing. Well, it's not such an effort. All you have to do is drive me to the station. You're driving yourself. Well, drive with me to the station. Mm. And then take over the wheel and drive over to the garage and say, battery. Battery. Pick up the battery and bring it home. And then give it to Fritz and he'll put it in the truck. Now, I wonder if I can manage all that. But I'll try, David. I'll do my best. Well, your best will be good enough, I trust. I guess it'll have to be. Well, thank you. It's all right. Then will the truck work, David, when Fritz has put in the battery, you Mm -hmm. think? Work like new. Good. Then you can drive yourself to the station tomorrow. Won't that be nice? All alone again. Oh, I don't mind your company so much. Well, that's that's very decent of you, old boy. Very decent. Well, I'm a very decent old boy. Are all other men like you? Very few, very few. Of course, I realize they're not half as good as you are. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, are they like you about cars and letting their wives drive? Mm, In that respect, we're identical. And proud of it. I fail to see why. Because women are notoriously, unmechanically inclined. My, 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 what a big sentence. Notoriously, unmechanically inclined. Whew. Well, I don't see how you can say that when you don't even give me a chance to be mechanically inclined. I don't have to experiment with you, darling, I know. It's a law of nature. Now, listen, there are exceptions to every rule. That's what makes rules. Not this one. Exceptions. Not this one. Do you honestly think, David, that you drive better than I do? (laughs) Hmph. I don't think. I know. I have never been given a ticket. Somebody I know has. Mm, that's because when a policeman sees a pretty girl driving a car, well, he 
looks the other way. Oh, David, that's sweet. Do you really think I'm pretty? Mm, not bad. Well, that's not so sweet, but it'll satisfy. Some of the things you do when you're driving a car, you deserve to be locked up in jail for. For instance? You don't pay attention. What's the difference? Nothing happens. See, there is no point in discussing this. You don't even want to learn. Well, I drive a car perfectly well enough for me, and if it doesn't suit you... I'll drive can... for myself. Yes. Yes. Well, I can't for the life of me see the difference the way you drive. <laughs> Except you make more of a fuss about it. I would have driven down this road the same way as you, staying right down the middle. Well, you're not supposed to drive down the middle. You're supposed to stay on the right. Then why are you driving down the middle? Because there are puddles on the right. Then I wouldn't be wrong driving down the middle. You'd be wrong because you don't know why you're doing it. Well, that makes no sense at all. Well, I suppose you can't help this attitude, darling. Bertha says it's because you're a man. Mm -hmm. David, listen, don't go so fast. You have plenty of time for your train. I'm not going fast. I were going 40, you'd say it was fast. It is fast for you. Mm -hmm, the double standard again. Women vote now. And smoke, too, remember? Hey, hmm? guess the car must have heard me tell you to go slower. Listen to it, it's coughing to death, poor thing. Well, I wonder what got into it. I don't know. Sounds like a cold has gotten into it, a bronchial cold. Yeah, I better pull over. <laughs> Listen yeah. to that. Uh -huh. It's amazing. My gosh, it's oh. dead. Car's dead, not even breathing. It's funny. I wonder what got into it. Certainly not the gas. There's plenty of gas. Well, I guess I better get out and see. Where are you going? For a look at the motor. Oh, I'll come with now you. You stay where you are. Why can't I look at the motor, too? Because you'll breathe down the back of my neck. A little breathing down the back of your neck won't hurt you. Here I come. Queer how something always happens to the car when I'm not driving now, nothing it. Nothing has happened to the car. Oh, no, no. It just stopped for no reason. I'll have it adjusted in a moment. All I can say is I'm certainly glad I wasn't driving this car. I never hear the end of this. You drove it yesterday, didn't you? Well, what's that got to do with it? You probably maltreated it so it broke down today. I might have known you'd find a way to blame this on me, but I know you didn't mean it. Much I don't. What do you see in the motor, David? The engine. No! What do you know? What do you suppose is the matter with the engine? Nothing. Probably the gas line is clogged up. Well, how could anything get into the gas line, for heaven's sake? Dirt. I know dirt. How'd it get in there? Uh, get me the tools out of the back of the car, darling. You don't want the jack? No, I don't want the jack. I just want the wrench. Heaven. Oh, it's certainly wonderful to be married to a mechanical genius, to a man who knows his way around an engine... You know you really look your best, David, with your head in the motor. I guess you're right about men, after all. I guess they're more mechanically inclined. I never would have thought of that gas thing. Never. Yep, I'm certainly lucky to... Lucky I'm a woman. I'm a lucky woman, too. Well, here's your wrench. No, I'll have this thing all fixed up in one minute. I'm not in any hurry, darling. I love watching you. David... What's that little wire thing sticking up? What little wire? The one that goes from the hoodinky to the what's this there? That's the wire from the distributor. Maybe it's broken. Get your head out of the way. Give that wire a little push. I'll give you Go a on. little push. Oh, please. Move over. Do you still think it's something in the gas line? It's hard to tell. We'll soon see. You're just like a surgeon. Now, now you get inside and try, uh, try starting the car. Do you mean you are really going to let me do something? Yeah, now be sure you have it out of gear. David, maybe you better stand back. I am all right if you'll just keep it out of gear. Well, here we go. Watch out. Well? I guess that's not it. You want me to do anything else? No. I'm coming out again. I love kibitzing. Say, darling, have you tested that, that little wire? No, it's, it's all right. Looks loose. It's supposed to look loose. It's funny. I never think of anything supposing to look loose inside a car. I might have the car towed in and the gas line blown out. Oh, no, no. no that sounds so radical. Try other things first. The battery's all right. How do you know? Because the starter worked. My, what a hard-working starter. Fascinating, the insides of a car. There's plenty of water. The motor's not overheated. The carburetor. What about it? Well, every car has one, David. Maybe it's something the matter with ours. Do go away. What are you doing now? David, that, that loose wire looks awfully loose. Even for a loose wire. 
You don't think so? Give it a little push. Or a pull. For the last time, Claudia, will you... All right. All right, I suppose each soup should only have one cook. You do know your way in an engine, I must admit. Still, it looks like such fun. Uh... Maybe it's one of these spark plugs. Darling, you'll you'll hurt your hand putting it there in the motor. Oh. Hey, what was that? Ooh. Maybe that little loose wire spat at me. Hmm. Yeah, show me what you did. Go on. Go on. It won't hurt. Just this. Mm-hmm. Well? Maybe I, I guess that wire could be a little looser than it needs to be. Do you mean I found out what the matter was? I'm not saying yet. Oh, no, no. I guess you're right. I guess I couldn't have being a woman. You see, it, it wouldn't do at all, no. I could find a way to keep it tight. It could be. Yeah, it could be this wire. Yeah, beginner's luck. Here, David, here's a bobby pin. What for? Keep the wire tight. Here, you fix it just like this. See? Claudia, you don't know what you're doing. I know I don't, but it's fun. You want the wire up against that little thingamajig like this. It, it, it won't stay like that. Well, probably not. We better let it try. You'll miss your train. Come on. The whole car probably blow up when I start it, if it starts at all. Wait and see. Putting bobby pins in motors, pulling little wires. Silly, isn't it? Well, now off we go, I hope. Is it, is it, is it going? Yeah, 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 let's see now. See if it keeps going. It's going! David, it's going. Aren't you proud of me? Mm, well, uh, no. I must say you, you did... Oh, no. Oh, no, what? A hideous thought has just crossed my mind. What now? What is going to happen with all the copper pennies that you've put in the fuses at home and when all of the bobby pins you've put between thingamajigs and hoodinkies and buckhuckles and so forth are worn down? Our house will probably collapse. A mechanical idiot. That's what I get for marrying a woman who is a mechanical idiot. This broadcast of Claudia was supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. A foreign visitor was taken to one of our larger movie theaters the other day. Coca-Cola, he exclaimed when he entered the lobby. Imagine being able to buy Coca-Cola right in the movie theater. Whereupon he insisted upon having an ice cold Coke then and there. It is nice to be able to enjoy Coke before or after the show, for Coke adds to the pleasure of good entertainment, and the pause that refreshes is always welcome. Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. And ice-cold Coca-Cola is everywhere. Everywhere.